All right, welcome back and happy Tuesday. As you can see below, this week is all about the future of e-commerce. I have another incredible guest. This is one, she's incredible. The company that she works with is incredible. So I have Tui Allen, who is the senior product leader at Shopify. Tui, thank you so much for being here today. Hi, Scarlett, my pleasure. Really looking forward to this. Absolutely. It's a conversation that that you and I and friends of ours, Sophie Jubot and others have certainly been having for a bit now, but I would love to just spend a few minutes to get pretty specific with you and think about start big and then go small. So if we look at the state of commerce over the last 12 months plus, we have seen a big change. We don't need to go into COVID again. We all know what's happening there, but there definitely has been a shift from physical to digital, especially on the small business side. And you know the, the need for small businesses and merchants to get their products out there. What are your thoughts on that shift in general more broadly for commerce? And then how do you think this is gonna impact this moving forward now that COVID is kind of settling down in certain parts of the world? Yeah, gr great question. Um, so you're right, things have changed um, pretty dramatically over the past year, year plus. Um, although you can kind of trace it back, things have been changing for a while. And I think this was just kind of the catalyst to sort of shift us forward quite a bit. And, you know, at Shopify, we are all about sort of um, providing kind of that broader access to creators, to builders, to entrepreneurs. And so this is actually from from like where I sit and where we sit at Shopify, a pretty exciting opportunity we have to really sort of like decentralize and bring this power of sort of the entrepreneurial spirit to the broader population and do that through this this broader commerce kind of uh, sort of open access that, that we have. Um, in terms of, you know, just thinking about how things have changed, because we're now kind of at a, the other side of things where things in certain, at least not, not globally, but um, because every country is a little different. But if we talk about the United States specifically right now, where um, we've done a decent job of the vaccine rollout, you are seeing um, brick and mortar um, and you are seeing sort of that, that sort of, uh, you know, individuals are going, consumers are going back to um, some of the older patterns. But what we're also seeing is that they're not losing sight of the convenience of all those patterns that existed for the ability to be able to shop online and the convenience of all the removed friction that that presents. So really this concept of omni-channel is a huge part of what we're seeing as the future. And that, you know, from a Shopify perspective, we wanna make sure that we're providing access to creators, builders, entrepreneurs, to be able to then have their their products accessible, whether it's at point of sale with our solutions there, so for the brick and mortar, whether it's um, through their own shop, through their e-commerce platform, or whether it's specifically through other channels like the partnerships we have with Google and Facebook or TikTok or others. It's really this whole omni-channel kind of transition that we're seeing. Yeah, and I think it, what you say is spot on, at least from, from the data that I've seen too, right? So if I go back to the, the finance lens specifically for a second, I mean, there were large segments of the population, uh, probably less true in Europe because they're a bit more advanced from that perspective, but specifically here in the US, there were large, large segments of the population that really had not been, uh, had not adapted to mobile and online banking. But in response to COVID, they kind of had to, uh, from everything that I've seen, the data suggests it's back to what you talked about—the convenience. So, do they still sometimes now go back into the branch to have that one that one-off conversation with their with their branch teller? Absolutely, and that there's certain people that that will always be appealing to. But for other transactions where they may have been getting on the phone before calling, they're more comfortable doing that online. So, I think that makes total sense. So, sticking with the the fintech lens a little bit here. So, if we think about historically where e-commerce is played. I mean, the e-commerce industry has really relied heavily on fintech to support the growth by removing friction at checkout. So just can you talk a little bit more about your thoughts around that and how you see, are there more places for friction, friction to be removed? Where can we go from here? Yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, so um, yeah, the, the financial, you know, you and I, Scarlett, we've, you know, been sort of working in fintech for a while and, and um, you know, are close to the financial services space. And it is um, an area that has um, moved a little slower than other parts of sort of technology and sort of some of the um, sort of evolution that we've seen in other areas like commerce, right? Um, and so really as it relates to fintech and sort of where we're going, 
Um, you know, if you think about commerce and fintech, to your point earlier, there the ability to remove friction at point of sale through um, connections to frictionless sort of payments and checkout, et cetera, has been something that um, has been in place for a while. But what we're really excited about, um, you know, in terms of like helping small businesses and entrepreneurs, because your typical large bank and financial institution uh, doesn't necessarily cater or support the small guys and the entrepreneur and the small business owner. Um, and they they tend to be those um, who feel incredibly overwhelmed and, and unfortunately underserved. And so our goal is to really kind of um, help support the small business owner and the entrepreneur. And we're going to do that through um, embedded financial solutions that we embed at the actual in context at the point of the job to be done, right? So if you think about that, going back to just kind of commerce and payments, right? That would be from that use case at the point of checkout. But if you think about it from the broader opportunity we have in terms of the broader embedded finance um, opportunity, we're looking at doing that sort of at the point of where they're actually sort of trying to manage their business, where they're trying to manage their cash flow where they're trying to, you know, m m sort of determine if they've got enough, you know, funds to be able to acquire new inventory. Uh, and so by bringing in those money management tools right at the point of where they're doing that business is really the next sort of evolution that we see in terms of like this, this uh, sort of embedded finance opportunity that we have to really help, um, you know, small businesses and entrepreneurs and ultimately help the consumer. Yeah. So one of the things you did there, you took us down a journey about a, a many different paths, right? Where, where there's opportunities for, for these small businesses and these, these entrepreneurs. So I have to ask you this question. Um, there's a lot of speculation. There's a lot of talk around, uh, when you think about from, from Tui's perspective is Shopify a FinTech and why or why not? Yeah. Um, so, uh, absolutely. We are a FinTech. Um, I would say probably most of the press we get is, is around commerce. But if you think about what enables commerce, the connection between money and commerce is has always been very, very connected. Uh, there's actually some great history there. And so, you know, you can trace it back from a Shopify perspective back to when we first started embedding payment solutions in the checkout solutions that we offered for our merchants to be able to very easily offer their consumers friction-free ways of transacting. Um, so we absolutely are. And now you kind of take it to the work that we're doing, whether it's the work that we're doing with Buy Now, Pay Later um, with the firm, or whether it's the work that we're doing with Shopify Balance that we'll be launching later this year that gives you the money management suite of capabilities, which include sort of a card to spend on, a rewards program built specifically for entrepreneurs that gives them cash back for the types of spending that actually fuel their business growth. So it's actually a really cool connection that we have there, whether it's the money management account to be able to actually manage cash flow and understand your spending and where you need to invest and helping kind of support that, that um, build that, uh, that confidence that so many small business entrepreneurs lack when it comes to like the money side. Um, or even, you know, there's probably so many more, but another example is the work that we're doing with Shopify Capital um, and making sure that Shopify Capital at the point of where the merchant or small business um, owner needs to have capital to be able to help them grow and fuel their business, we embed that right at that point. So Shopify is absolutely a fintech. Um, and I think you're going to see a lot more coming from us um, over the next uh, several um, months and quarters. Well, that was a very thought out and detailed answer. I, I have a feeling you had been thinking about this for a while. <laughs> um, all right, Tui. Well, we could. <laughs> yes, exactly. You and the team. We could be spending hours talking about this, but let's wrap it up for now. Uh, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. For all of you, as always, there is a bunch more from Tui below. Please read the Q&A. Uh, there you can reach out. You'll find ways to connect with Shopify and Tui as always. Uh, until next week, signing off. Bye, everyone. Thank you.